hello. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's up? Can you tell me anything about McConnell Air Force Base? It's not very far from Conwell Springs. Joseph was stationed there for some time during the war. I believe they're still training young pilots there today. So when did Grandpa enlist in the Air Force? Oh, it was barely past the honeymoon when Joseph left to fight in that terrible war, together with his best friend Charles and my brother Andrew. Those were nerve-wracking years. I was so worried I thought I would burst. Every short visit from Joseph was a joy, but he kept going back to the front, to my great dismay. When I told Joseph about being pregnant with your father, he finally realized that enough was enough. He had done his duty. Shortly thereafter, he returned to a quiet farmer's life in this very house, helping your great-grandfather with the crops until he passed. Do you know anything about a young girl drowning around here? Oh, yes. It was the saddest thing. We never really knew the family. They preferred to keep to themselves. Do you remember the name of the girl or her family? I'm awfully sorry, dear. I, I just can't recall. That's okay, Grandma. I was just wondering why Grandpa would have wanted to save this. Joseph was always affected by the tragedy of others. Perhaps he wanted to do something for the family. In any case, he didn't speak to me about it. Does the nickname Cocky mean anything to you? Sounds vaguely familiar. It reminds me of the aviator call signs Joseph and his friends gave one another. Joseph was vigilante. I can't count the number of times he got into trouble for breaking the rules. To this day, I have no idea how he always managed to land on his feet. <laughs> Must be hereditary, given the things I've gotten away with. Every time I wake up, I am genuinely surprised that I'm not in jail. <laughs> I'm sure it's not that bad, dear. But to get back to the subject, you don't have any idea of who this cocky is? I'm afraid not, but the Air Force might be a good place to start. I don't see a reason to ask. What do you think about this church, Grandma? They seem harmless to me, but they can be a bit pushy at times. Huh, you could say that. Handing out pamphlets at funerals is in pretty bad taste. Awfully strange behavior for a pre- I got the dictaphone already. I don't- Grams, can you tell me anything about this picture? It looks awfully bright. Perhaps something was wrong with the camera. Yeah, maybe. I should try to figure something out tomorrow at the university. Look at this photo I found in the locked briefcase. Goodness, I haven't seen that picture in years. This was taken when Joseph was stationed at McConnell Air Force Base. What about the other two? I don't remember the name of the smiling man in the back. The gentleman on the right was Joseph's best friend, Charles Wade. What can you tell me about Charles Wade? Well, I do know he has made quite a name for himself since he and Joseph went to war together. Apparently, he came up with some brilliant piece of engineering for the airplanes. Any idea how to get in touch with him? I'm afraid not, dear. I haven't seen him for years. Any particular reason for that? Oh, uh, not that I know of. Do you know anything about this story, Grandma? Not much, dear. We never really knew. Do you remember? I'm awfully sorry. That's quite a... Joseph was old. And then... Okay. Do you recognize this key, Grandma? I found it in the attic. I'm afraid not, dear. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear.
Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Nah, I don't... Hey, Lenny. Do you remember anything about a girl drowning around here? Yeah, I remember my mom telling me about that. I was like six at the time, though. Do you remember her name? Oh, man. Not really. I was so little. I think it was something with an L. All right. I'll keep looking. Nah, I don't want to... Nah, I don't... Well, gotta go. See ya! Hello, Sheriff. I don't need... Do you know anything about the drowning here in 1975? You have a memory problem? I told you I haven't been working here that long. Besides, even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. I don't need... I don't... That's all for now. Good. Grandma must have had this restored recently. Cute red horse. It's some old Swedish thing, I think. I don't want to burn that. Got it. No result for that. Damn, no Charles Wade in here. Was worth a shot, but being rich and famous and all, I guess he's got a hidden number. No hit for Wade Industries either, but it was kind of a long shot for them to have an office in this small county anyway. I should try to get a hold of him some other way. Just wondering if you had time to answer a few questions. Sure thing, ma'am. Ask away. What can you tell me about McConnell Air Force Base? This is one of the oldest Air Force bases in the U.S., established during World War I. The main purpose of it is to train fighter pilots. In the late 80s, the school started accepting a limited number of civilian applicants due to the high demand. Some of the most famous dogfighters in U.S. history, such as Ethan Fireball Jenkins, Joseph Vigilante Rain, and Brett Xavier Myers trained at this very base. Charles Wade, the great industrialist, did too. Some claim that many of his revolutionary ideas came from the former chief mechanic here, the late Niles Bloom. Interesting. Thanks for the history lesson. I don't see her. Do you recognize the aviator call sign, Cocky? Afraid not, ma'am. I know all the call signs here, and I'm positive it's not one of them. This isn't current, though. It might have been used as early as World War II. Oh, that's unfortunate. We don't keep any official records of call signs. The only option I can think of is to get a hold of somebody who was around back then. Any suggestions? The only person I can think of who is still alive would be Charles Wade. All right, thanks. My pleasure, ma'am. I'm trying to get a hold of Charles Wade. Would you happen to know how to reach him? I'm sorry, ma'am, but Charles Wade is a public figure. He has explicitly asked us not to provide his contact details to anyone. Is there any way you can make an exception? I really need to talk to Mr. Wade. No oh, can do. I can't really help you out unless you have some sort of official business. I do have official business. I'm Deputy Reagan. I'm calling from Conwell Springs Sheriff's Department. Nice try. You know what caller ID is? You can clearly see that you're not calling from the station. Goodbye. Damn, I can't pull that off if I call from here.
Hey, Sheriff, what's the deal with that bum? What bum? Hey. Hi there. Uh, could you distract Lenny again? Sure, I needed to puke again anyway. Good to know. Guess what? He's having some kind of fit in there. <sighs> Not again. Here we go again. Trying to I'm sorry. Yeah. Is there okay? I do have official business. I'm Deputy Reagan. Hmm. I can see that you're actually calling from the station. You say you're a cop. You don't sound like a cop. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It's just because I'm a woman, right? Women don't belong in law enforcement. Is that what you're saying? That's so sexist. Now that's hardly what. Do you have any idea what I have to go through every day? Nobody takes me seriously. The dirty looks, the sexual innuendos, I've... Relax, okay? I'll check the files. It's 555-7641. Thanks, buddy. Hi, this is Kathy Rain. I'm calling for Charles Wade. He doesn't live here anymore. What's this about? What do you want with my father? I'd just like to have a quick word with Mr. Wade. It's about my grandfather, Joseph Rain. You're 20 years late, girl. My father has neither time nor energy to deal with you people. But... This conversation is over. Unless my father explicitly says he wants to talk to you, it's not going to happen. What a stuck-up, overclass witch. Well, she hasn't heard the last from me. I'm... Alright, this is the right date. Looks like her name was Lily Myers. I wonder what that kid is doing here all alone. Hey kid. Hi yourself. What are you doing? None of your business. Huh, I like you, kid. You're not here alone, right? Where's your mom? Oh, she's around. I don't see her. You must be blind or something. I'll go look for your mom, okay? Don't go anywhere. Whatever. I'm gonna find out what happened to you, Grandpa. Kid? 
Guess he found his mom. Hello, dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's... I found out that the drowned girl's name was Lily Myers. Ring a bell? Oh, yes. Oh, how could I forget? Sue, Jack, oh, and their children, Lily and Nathan. Do they still live around here? Mother and son do. I, I see them in town from time to time. They live somewhere near the lake. But not the father. Jack, was it? No. He disappeared not long after Lily took her own life. Whoa, she killed herself. That's news to me. Oh, that girl had been troubled for years. Truman made an official statement later. It was no accident. I see. Do you know how I can reach the family? Not really, dear. Like I said, they tend to keep to themselves. I don't see a reason. Bye, Grandma. I'll be back later. So long. been dead for two decades. I could try to find someone in her family, but I'll need a full name. All right, found an address. Somebody around here is a chain smoker. We have something in common. Good to know. It's totally overflowing. 55 degrees. It doesn't belong to me. I yes? Can I help you? I hope so. My name's Rain. Kathy Rain. Joseph's girl. The one they sent away. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Well, what do you want? I had some questions about your daughter, Lily. Well, you know what? I don't have any answers, girl. Lily was precious, special. Lily died. That's all there is to it. My grandfather came to see you, right? To ask about her? Maybe he did. I'm not asking for much, Mrs. Myers. Then clearly, you have no idea what it's like losing a child. Goodbye. Won't you ever give up? I'm still here and will be until you agree to talk to me. Enjoy a night curled up in the leaves, then. Care to join me for a smoke, Mrs. Myers? Well, um, I'm gonna have to think about it. What brand? Corley Cinders. Extra long. You got taste. I'll give you that. Well, I 
I suppose one smoke can hurt. And that's when he realized it was his own bong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, oh, now that was a good one. <laughs> you know what, Kathy, you're okay. Sorry for being such a cranky old bag before I get a short fuse when I run out of smokes. Now that's an understatement. Good thing I had my morning smoke, otherwise we would have had a fist fight on our hands. <laughs> oh, it's getting chilly. Why don't we head inside? Sure, let's go. Now, this here's my boy, Nathan. He's special. Nate, be polite and say hello to Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi there, big guy. What you doing, big fella? Drawing. Oh, yeah? What are you drawing? The nice red man. You mean Santa? No, the nice red man. Now, what did I say about raising your voice at strangers? Sorry, Mama. I'll be nice. The red man is nice. Don't mind him. He gets so absorbed in his drawings thanks to that wild imagination of his, just like his sister. So you wanted to ask me about Lily? Yeah. Do you mind telling me what happened when my grandfather came to see you? Well, he knocked on my door a few years after Lily had passed away. I didn't know Joseph too well myself, but I'd heard of him and the good he'd done for the other people around here. So I let him in. He started asking a bunch of questions about Lily, like if I was absolutely sure that she, that it was suicide. And what did you say? The truth, that she was depressed and, and had been for a long time. I had no doubts about what happened. Anything else? Well, he was weirdly curious about her paintings. Lily painted? Yep, that's one of hers right there on the wall. I see, it's beautiful. So, in what way was he curious? He asked if Lily had painted anything odd or strange. He spent some time browsing through them, and then he wrote something down on a piece of paper, thanked me, and left. Huh, any idea of what he could have seen? Not really. I had the paintings all lined up. Could have been any of them. Would you mind showing them to me? Well, I would if I could, but this is the only one I have left. I sold the rest many years ago to this weirdo art collector. So, tell me about Lily's art. It used to be about cheerful things, but as she drifted further into depression, she started painting horrible things, death and decay. And the last few pieces look like something out of a nightmare. That's awful. Did Lily ever get any recognition for her art? Not really, except from the guy I told you about who bought most of her paintings. Tell me about this art collector person. Rich? Fancy looking, in his 50s or thereabouts, I'd say he'd be around 70 now if he's still alive. He knocked on that door one day with a wad of cash in his hand. Five thousand dollars. He wanted everything that Lily so much as touched with a brush. Huh, did he say why? Nope, but I got the feeling that most of that dough was paid so he could avoid any questions. I took the money. I still had Nathan to support. Did the stranger give you his name? No. Well, his face was far from forgettable, though. Big nose, bright blue eyes, looked black Irish. He had a thick black mane, turning gray, no beard. All right, Sue. Thanks. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather? How he ended up in a wheelchair? Stroke, wasn't it? At least that's what I heard. Not necessarily. There are some divided opinions about it. Now that I think about it, that whole ordeal happened to him not long after he came here. How long? A week, maybe, at the most. I don't need to... Mind telling me what Lily was like, Sue? I'd be happy to. She was Nathan's 
older sister by two years. Lily was like any girl growing up, normal, happy, talking about school, boys, and whatnot. And she and Nathan were close back then, always playing together in the woods. When Lily was 10, she started drawing, always doodling on just about anything she could get her hands on. We didn't have much, really, and so she used what she could. Once I even caught her scribbling on toilet paper. (laughs) On her 12th birthday, we gave Lily a thick sketchbook with an assortment of pencils. She was ecstatic. From that day, drawing became her life. When Lily was 15, something changed. At first, I thought it was just usual teen angst, but no, this was something different. She started going out, disappearing for long periods of time. She locked herself in when painting. She never used to do that. I tried everything. Counseling, support groups, antidepressants. About a year later, she just gave up. I'm sorry, Sue. That must have been unimaginable. Thanks, darling, but it's been a while now. I've learned to live with it. I don't need to ask. Does the name Charles Wade mean anything to you? Oh, he's some big-time businessman, ain't he? Yeah, he owns a large company. That about sums up what I know about the fella. What do you do to support the two of you? Uh, a little bit of this and that. Got me some cash saved up, too. Nathan helps out when he can. What happened to your husband, if you don't mind me asking? You could say he didn't quite cope as well as I did with what happened to Lily. He got himself a death wish after what happened to her, started drinking and getting into all sorts of trouble. Five years left for him in the joint now, been there for 15. Man, that must be rough for you. Oh, we're doing just fine without him, aren't we, Nate? Mama takes good care of us. Mama sure does. No reason to show. No reason. No reason. What do you think about this church? It's a good church. I go there from time to time. I bring Nate, too, when that boy needs the fear of God put into him. It was fun the last time, but nah. No reason to. (laughs) I was pretty tempted before, but I think we're past that now. No reason to sh- Hey, Sue, do you recognize any of these men? Well, there's Joseph (laughs) Rain. Always so handsome. I had such a crush on him back in the day. And... No way. That's him. The man who bought the paintings. He's he's much younger here, but there's no mistake in that hair and nose. Are you sure? I'm positive, little cat. That's the guy who walked into this cabin with five grand in cash. That's very helpful, Sue. Thanks. Ugh. Another question for the elusive Mr. Wade. I'd rather just ask her about... Do you know what this key opens? Well, that's a bit of a weird question, ain't it? But no. I think I'm gonna head off now. Sure thing, little cat. Come back any time. It's getting late. I should head back to the city. Hey, you're still up. I was wondering when you'd show up. How did it go? Long story. I found out about some stuff that happened when I was a kid. What a mystery. So what's the plan now? I don't know yet, but I'll figure something out. What about this Charles Wade? You still haven't talked to him. And that strange bright picture you showed me? Those tapes? Listen, I know this guy. Eileen, relax. We can talk about it tomorrow, okay? Oh, it's way too late now. Oh, I couldn't possibly sleep now. I'm way too excited. 
Well, that makes one of us nighty. <sighs> Good night, cat. Hey, Kathy, wake up! Ugh, you are so lucky there are no sharp objects near this bed. Guess what? I got an idea. Please tell me it involves you taking a sabbatical. Haha, <laughs> so you found all this evidence, right? Pictures, tapes, and stuff? I guess. Why? Well, as you know, I have a computer. And I know this hacker guy, Dave, and... Oh, never mind. I'll just write you a note. You go back to sleep. Seriously, Eileen, sometimes I just marvel at how your brain works. I know, right? Are you sure you want to do this, Catherine? You still have time, if you think there's any chance you would change your mind. I'm sure, Doctor. Just get it out of me. But please, don't tell my mom. I'm sorry, but we have to do that. It's the law. Nobody has to know, just pretend it slipped your mind. I have enough shit going on with her already, this would just add fuel to the fire. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. Fine. Let's just get this over with then. Right this way. Ugh, I hate that dream. <gasps> I guess Eileen went to class. I probably should too. Nah.